for breast cancer um, awareness, the you know, all that, yes, that's one of the most publicized, one of the most, you know, everyone knows of the breast cancer sites and all this. But they still need recognition. They do. I mean, I mean, yeah, like I said, they get more than just about every other one. But still, that doesn't mean you should just stop paying attention to it just because it gets a lot of recognition. But, you know, could you imagine if these people who were offering to pay for something as as vain as giving a small-breasted woman a pair of fake tits, you know, if they put that money towards ending world hunger, if they put that money towards the research for breast cancer, if they put that towards, you know, something a little more valid than just giving some poor minuscule housewife, you know, a bit of a jolly... You know, imagine what the world could do. Exactly. I mean, it's all a matter of people just put their priorities in all of the wrong places. I mean, yeah, sure, I'd I'd like a, a larger set of boobs. But you know what? Out of all the things in this world that matter, that's one of the things that sits right at the bottom of the list. Because I am yeah. who and what I am. And you sort of got to de- uh, play with the hand you've been dealt, really. Or play with a boob you've been dealt. You know, whatever. Yeah, however it may sit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um. Yeah. Does Florida have a vampire just... problem? I don't know, does it? I don't know, but according to this news article, they may. October 3rd. Ooh. This past week, a 16-year-old male was found brutally murdered in St. Petersburg, Florida. Police suspect it's the work of a vampire cult after one of the teens <laughs> After one of the teens linked to the crime, Stephanie Pisty oh that's an unfortunate <laughs> name claimed to be part of the vampire and part of the wo- part of a vampire and part of a werewolf. Which parts? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Vampires are becoming a bit of a problem in the Sunshine State. Yes, that's Florida, not Queensland. I'll just make that differentiate there because Queensland is actually called the Sunshine State. Um, Less than two weeks ago, reports of another bloodlust crime surfaced in the States. I am a vampire. I am going to eat you, 22-year-old Joseph. Right, you're reading. My bad, sorry. <laughs> 22-year-old Josephine Smith allegedly told 69-year-old St. Petersburg homeless man before biting the skin off his arms, face, and lips. Ew. Ew. In February, two teenagers from Monroe County, Florida, were found to have bitten each other repeatedly in a vampire-inspired romantic ritual. Ew. And late last year, Jonathan Sharkey, a 45-year-old Tampa native who calls himself the Impolar, announced plans to run for president on the vampire ticket. Mm. Uh, he's also been accused by the parents of 16-year-old girl of brainwashing after he tried to take her as his wife. I remember that one. Yeah, so do I. He's a bit of a wacko. Uh, you That's can- an understatement. Just a little bit. You can blame pop culture for the rise in the real life trend, but vampires have been around in Florida long before Twilight or True Blood. One of the most notorious murders in the state in the past 20 years involved a teenage vampire clan, that inverted commas. After a very public trial, 16-year-old Rod Farrell was charged with the 1998 murder of his so-called clan members' parents in... Ooh, help me out here. Eustace, I think? Yeah, Eustace, Florida, there we go. Not to be mistaken for useless Florida, but anyway. We love love Florida. Uh, Now Farrell serves as a cautionary tale for members of vampiric communities all across across Florida, an example of how the blood-sucking culture can go wrong. But he's also a bizarre historical touchstone for Floridian... Ooh, that sounds like yes. something nasty. Vamps, adding fuel to the fact that the state is becoming America's vampire headquarters. Yeah, right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, there's plenty of hedonism and psychic feeding at these parties, says Joseph Bonilla, organiser of Vamp South Beach, and a former New Times ad salesman. Why the hell would you add that? Anyway, rarely is there blood play or discussion in public. That part is a little bit like the mafia. The more people know, the less they talk, and the more they talk, the less they know. Good to know. <laughs> Uh, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything else in that bit that I need to read? I don't think there is. No, basically it's just a bunch of crazy people and blah, blah, blah. Someone did $800 for a set of permanent fangs. Not important. Blah, blah, blah. It's an invitation to turn all vampire and pretend, or if you find a willing participant, not so much pretend, to blood suck. Yeah. Nah. Nah. If you're in Florida and you're an actual vamp, hide. Yeah, definitely. I mean, granted, <clears throat> this actually reminds me of a friend of mine who uh, grew up in Florida, or not grew up, but she moved to Florida at one point. And, um, I mean, it really is a problem. It really is. I mean, it, like it said, long before Twilight, um, I'd say <sighs> probably about even longer before, like, Anne Rice's Vampires came out, which Interview of the Vampire was written in, what, 1970, I think? Mm-hmm, something like that. A really, really long time ago. Really long time ago, but yeah, so... <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to get sick. Anyway. <clears throat> um, So it's been a problem, but <laughs> the one thing that I really, really wanted to point out... Let me see if I can find it real quick. I, I was scrolling down with you. Oh, let me see if I can remember it now. Other than the Jonathan Sharkey thing. Oh, my God. Mm, he doesn't need any more publicity. He's weird. No, he really doesn't. That guy is just absolutely crazy. And he's nothing more than a American-born terrorist. But anyway. Um, I'm a vampire. I'm going to eat you. Okay, number one. Vampires suck blood. They don't eat people. That's zombies and werewolves. Thank you. So if you're going to say that you are something, get it right. Yeah. Vampires they for don't dummies. I'm, sh I'm sure there's a Vampires for Dummy book out there somewhere. Probably. Hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> Stupid people. <sighs> okay, on to the next one. Yes. Let me scroll back down now. No! Ah! Matt Smith's face was staring at me. That was weird. <laughs> I moved my mouse wrong and it showed my back. Shut up, Belinda. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Driver used laptop, drank coffee, and did quiz from October 5th. A motorist was caught using his laptop, sipping, sipping or sifting, whatever. You know. <laughs> sifting copy, I think is what I was about to say. <laughs> Spit coffee and writing down answers to a radio quiz all at the same time. The driver was booked for juggling the activities while driving the highway during a five day crackdown on distracted motorists by police in New Hampshire. The Daily Telegraph reported today. A second man was also ticketed for eating a pear with a knife while driving. The five day clampdown took place last week on the M27 and M3 highways. Police hired an unmarked truck in order to get a good viewpoint from which to observe and video offenders. 84 vehicles were stopped after offenses were witnessed, and 65 motorists are being prosecuted. Of these, 39 have been charged with driving while using cell phones, 26 for being distracted or not in proper control of their vehicles. Sergeant Paul Diamond said... This should send a very loud message out to motorists. If you are caught using your mobile phone whilst driving, you will face a 60-pound, or $92, fine and three points on your license. Should you crash whilst driving distracted or on your phone, causing death by careless driving is punishable by 14 years in prison, and we will seek to robustly prosecute anyone committing these offenses. Yeah, so don't be stupid. Just drive your damn car. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone, I mean, well, you haven't because you don't drive, but I've, I mean, I have talked on the phone, but 
if I have to absolutely answer my phone while I'm driving, like my mother's calling or you know someone that's watching my child, something like that, I'm going to answer. But I tend to slow down and you know try to drive as safely as possible. What makes me angry is there are people that text message and there are people that talk on the phone and swerve all over the road. Like they're literally as bad as being drunk. Well, they reckon it's worse than being drunk because you're actually paying less attention than you would be when you're drunk. Mm-hmm. So if you need to answer the phone, pull over. 